Uh, how has it been dealing with Big Pharma? Uh, has there been any kind of conflict at all? Not with us, no. Mm -hmm. um, I think they have uh, a whole lot of other things that they need to have <laughs> that, they're, that they're dealing with right now with um, <laughs> You know the op opioid epidemic and how angry people are at them for for causing basically the opioid epidemic. Um, my wife is right now going through nursing school and she was in pharmacology. She just passed her pharmacology class and they were encouraging these nurses to watch these you know ABC uh, investigative reports in 60 minutes and Netflix specials on the opioid addiction epidemic that we have here and um, you know it's. A it's lot crazy. of kids, they, they yeah. get hurt or people get hurt or and they they were administered or, or prescribed, you know, a whole bunch of Percocet or a whole bunch of Vicodin, you know, opiate, you know, derivatives. And uh, then they run out and they're addicted. And then, yeah. they, then they go and they find street drugs. And now you have created a heroin addict and it's... And then they it, treat heroin with... Uh, what, methadone? What, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And, and even more... Uh, addicting substance yeah. and um, something's got to change you know something has to change um, we're, we're looking at some really dire numbers that we're putting out as, as a American culture um, with uh, our diabetes rate our uh, obesity rate our death by medicine rate our overdose rate um, it's the highest in the world and we also pay the most for our medical care and so you know, and one third of, of America is also living in chronic pain. And so how good are we doing with our current model? So why isn't this bigger then? Why isn't this more popular? Uh, because there's, uh, you're marketed to by mm -hmm. those that have the most money, uh, and which is big pharma. You know, they have the money to put all of these ads constantly on TV that we all see where it's, you know, this will take care of your gout, but you'll have bleeding of the eyes. And, right, you and, might die. You know, you might, if you survive, yeah. you'll right. have great, you know, right. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. your toenails yeah. won't be yelling any, yeah, anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, but they have, I mean, the bottom line is they control a lot of what's fed to us um, in the media and on TV and in advertising. Um, and they have marketed to us that we need drugs. We need drugs and we need surgeries. And... Um, there obviously is a time and a place for drugs uh, when somebody, you know, overdoses. Um, and, um, you know, my, my, my brother-in-law, he's a fireman, and he said most of his calls now are overdoses. Um, and so when, you know, somebody is in their home, they've overdosed, and they have to go give them a, um, a shot of, I can't recall the name of the, the, uh, the drug that brings them back. Um, but that's an absolute necessity at that point. Or if somebody you know falls off the third story and breaks a bunch of bones, they gotta have those bones reset. They probably have to have some surgery. But there are in so many cases um, where people are getting unnecessary sur surgeries or being prescribed unnecessary drugs, and um, there's so much that they can do for themselves with um, with energy medicine now, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's electrotherapy, light therapy, uh, sound wave therapy, and Everything that I have seen in my professional career, uh, everything that my brother has seen in his professional career, um, at the highest levels, um, and and using some of these other, a lot of these other modalities, uh, light therapy, this device, the Equiscope, is is far and beyond the the, the fastest, safest, mm -hmm. um, and facilitates the the quickest healing. How, why haven't physicians jumped onto this more? Because they're the ones prescribing these drugs and surgeries, right? right? Well, it comes down to uh, a model that makes money. And um, generally, we don't see people for very long. Um, they, mm. you know, they love to, doctors love to um, bill insurance and, you know, or post-surgery, they send somebody to a, uh, uh, a rehab clinic and they want them to do a full 12 weeks of, of rehab. And um, if you get them bet better in two weeks, three, we three weeks, that's a lot of money lost either by the clinic or by the, you know, pharmaceutical industry that they don't get to prescribe the drugs mm -hmm. anymore. And, um, I mean, it comes down to uh, the almighty dollar. Have have and, any of them come out and said why they won't implement something like this? Because I doubt that they would say that. 
Yeah, no, generally it's just, um, like that's it, true, but yeah. I wanted, well, I want, I'm wondering what their excuse is. I have been told by a surgeon, um, no, we can't have people getting healthy without surgery. Uh, I've been told that and, uh, or, um, you know, they say, wow, this is really incredible technology. Um, but we're just not ready. We don't want to adopt anything new into our practice right now. Are they waiting? I mean, is this a new, how long exa exactly has this been around? Are people waiting to see long-term effects? Like what are they waiting for if with a 98% success rate? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it, no, it's been around for about 20, 30 years, 20, 30 believe years. it or not. Yeah. Um, and they are, uh, there has been a whole lot of studies done on, uh, microcurrent therapy. Mm -hmm. There just has not been much done on this certain piece of, of equipment for some odd reason. Um, the distributors have not put the money into uh, empirical evidence and double blind clinical testing. Um, if you want to do a large scale double blind clinical testing, it's it's going to be millions of dollars. And um, for, sir, for whatever reason, they have tried to do this organically and, mm -hmm. and um, but it's time for for testing to be done, sure. and uh, the you know the proof is really in the pudding, and uh, it's part of one of the things that Cody and I are doing is showing this um, w with thermal imaging, um, with uh, a, a number of different ways of testing levels in your body. Um, we've actually had success with uh, hearing uh, getting better, tinnitus, uh, the, like heavy ringing in your ears, mm -hmm. dropping that, um, increasing vision. And hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.